Today I'm going to be talking about SARS-CoV-2, also known as COVID-19, or simply referred to as coronavirus. I'm going to be discussing some basic virology as it relates to the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. What are viruses? Viruses are submicroscopic, non-living parasites that need a host cell to replicate. They contain either DNA or RNA and a protein coating. A virus attaches to a cell membrane, then inserts its genetic material into and takes control of the host cell. The virus makes copies of itself, then bursts out of the cell to infect new cells. Viruses can have genetic material in either DNA or RNA form. SARS-CoV-2 is an RNA virus, also known as a retrovirus. When an RNA virus enters a host cell, it must convert its RNA to DNA to inject its genetic material into the host cell and replicate. There are many different strains of coronavirus. In fact, 20 to 30 percent of common colds are caused by coronavirus. Many mammals and even some birds and reptiles have their own strains of coronavirus. Sometimes coronavirus can jump species to species. This was the case with the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. A coronavirus is an enveloped, single-stranded RNA virus that has club-shaped spike proteins on a membrane that attach it to the host cell surface. As SARS-CoV-2 has been spreading around the world, it has had some genetic drift or small mutations. It does not seem to change the virulence or virus properties yet. Genetic drift has unknown implications in SARS-CoV-2, but we can expect evolutions from this virus in the future. There has been a lot of talk about testing to discover who is infected and who has been infected. To look for the actual virus, you need to look for the viral RNA. Tests to look for viral RNA are called PCR tests. PCR testing is a way to amplify sections of a virus's RNA sequence and look for it in the lab. A way to check if someone was infected with SARS-CoV-2 is to look for the body's response by looking for antibodies to the virus in circulation. Ultimately, we need an effective vaccine or herd immunity to break the transmission chain. This means that if one person is infected with SARS-CoV-2, enough people around them are immune so that it's not transmitted to others. It is predicted that around 60 to 70 percent of the population would need immunity to break the chain of transmission. Viruses and pandemics have plagued humanity throughout history. Hopefully, human ingenuity will help us through these tough times and provide an effective vaccine for SARS-CoV-2.